One of the important aspects of DUI enforcement that is being treated lightly is the proper training of Pennsylvania police officers. The truth of the matter is that police officers in Pennsylvania receive very little DUI training, but are entrusted with the very difficult task of determining who is drunk driving and who is not. Furthermore, there is a great deal of pressure put on police officers to arrest people for DUI because it is well known that officers with the most DUI arrests, not actual convictions, receive awards and promotions. So here is your recipe for disaster. An overzealous police officer hunting for DUIs without really knowing how to spot one with any sort of certainty. To compound this problem, much of the little training that police officers do receive is not scientifically valid. Here's some information from law enforcement officers from a website, www.padui.org. And they suggest that the following 20 clues which police officers may use to detect nighttime drunk driving cues. The cues were supposedly developed from interviews with a variety of law enforcement specialists in DUI detection. From a detailed analysis of more than a thousand DUI arrest reports from different geographical regions and from a field study in which cues observed in more than 600 patrol stops were correlated with driver BAC levels. These cues supposedly represent the most systematically developed method available for visually predicting whether a vehicle operated at night is being driven by a DUI driver or a sober driver. The number that's given after each visual cue is the probability that the driver exhibiting the cue has a BAC equal to or greater than 0.10%. For example, the 65 for the first cue, turning with wide radius, mean the chances are 65 out of 100 that a driver who turns with a wide radius at night will have a BAC equal to or greater than 0.10. The 50 that's correlated with drifting means that chances are 50 out of 100 or 50-50 that the driver who is drifting at night will have a BAC equal to or greater than 0.10%. Supposedly each value shown is based upon seeing only one clue. However, they're taught that multiple clues are often seen. When two or more clues are seen, that add 10% to the highest value among the cues observed. And you have to really sit back and think about this and see whether or not that's a valid type of way. How many of us have taken a wide turn, maybe because we were talking on the cell phone or holding a cup of coffee between our legs or doing something else? According to the information that they're taught, when this is originally taken from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration manual called Visual Detection of DUI, two out of the three of us were drunk when we took that wide turn. And that doesn't make sense. These percentages have not been truly peer-reviewed and can cause officers to draw incorrect conclusions early on about who should be pulled over for DUI and who shouldn't. I can tell you from actual trial experience that many of these DUI cues are not fair indicators of whether or not the motorist was drunk. For example, based upon current Pennsylvania DUI case law, if an officer pulls someone over simply for drifting within their own lane, and that's it, the case is likely to be thrown out due for lack of a probable cause to stop the vehicle. People all over in Pennsylvania want to solve the DUI problem. So do I, and keep our families safe. The first step to do that is providing police officers with what they need, which is the right training based upon true science so they can enforce the DUI laws properly.